Dave this week in the Observer had summer information about CM Punk and the status and what's going on here. And I find this to be fascinating stuff. Uh, nothing really out of the ordinary. I think we, we all could assume that he's likely finished with the company, but there were some tidbits here. One being a lot of top names did not want to work with him. Uh, due to, I guess, relationships in the past and everything that, that's been going on in AEW. Chris Jericho even calling him a cancer in the locker room at one point. Uh, it is amazing how Chris Jericho has kind of taken this locker room leader position uh, over the last couple of months and turned it into a, a management position of sorts. But on Wednesday, mm -hmm. Wrestling Gang's Nick Houseman, you know Nick, I know Nick. Yeah, Nick got that. yelled at by Punk in that scrum, but I know Nick outside of that. You know, I've known mm -hmm. him for for years yeah. from his coverage at Wrestling Gang. No, yeah, I met him while he was producing Eric Bischoff's podcast like a yeah. million years ago. Yeah. Uh, Nick Houseman reported that those from Punk's camp, and this is fascinating to me, okay? This is the latest new piece of information here. Uh, Punk's camp said, and again, this is according to Nick Houseman, uh, that Larry was injured during the backstage altercation and Larry had to have two teeth removed. I guess the the story was, and tell me if I'm wrong here, and Matt, uh, MG, our, our producer, he, he could correct me if I'm wrong because I, the last two days have been a blur to me. Um, did, was the report that when when they kicked, and I'm using hand quotes here, when they kicked the door open, it hit it hit Larry the dog and caused yeah, some sort that's of what happened. injury? Listen, yeah, I, that's, that's what's being reported. I, I never heard any of this, okay? Never once on the record or off the record was I said anything. And, and listen, by the way, everybody's told stuff off the record, right? And a lot of times, a lot of this stuff you really can't verify or I, I never heard any of this. This is one of those scenarios that everything that was said what was, was reported. If yeah. this was mentioned at all to anybody while this altercation was happening or the days after this, where we got all this information to come out, uh, I think this would have been, uh, I mean, to many, a, a game changer as far as Punk's reaction to things. If my dog, mm -hmm. if I'm sitting in a locker room, and no matter, I, listen, he was already hot, right? He was already uh, going nuts in that scrum. If somebody kicked my door open and it hit my dog in the face and my dog was obviously in distress and pain and he's bleeding, he lost a tooth. You know what? I may react the same way. I don't know. I would hope that I don't, that I would be able to control how I feel, but my dog's my dog. Yeah, no, if that happened to my dog, <laughs> uh, I would see red. I would definitely you see would. red. Yeah. Someone someone may be on a live after that because if you if you if it's an accident, I'd try to calm down, but I'm very protective of my dog, especially when we're out walking. She's also her own worst enemy. Uh, she's, she's very sweet, but very stupid. Much I mean, like myself. nobody, this is, this is the thing, you, you know, you are a sweet boy. I don't know about stupid, you. but you are a sweet boy. Um, man. I don't know, man. I, I would, I would be Dave. Dave said he never heard this. Sean, I believe also said for the last six weeks or so, whatever the time period was for this. He never also, heard a word about in this. this. In this situation. And the truth lies somewhere in the middle of all these stories because perspective, what's going on, what people see and what people want to say is varied. And it creates this, we're, we're in this Michigas right now. I don't think anybody on the AEW side or on the elite side, there's like 87 different sides of this. It's like the Trivial Pursuit Board. Yeah. Um, I don't think anybody on that side would want to say, "Yeah, a dog got hurt." Yes, of course. Like I, I yeah. If 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 Dave and Sean's sources were in those camps, because it seems like Nick's report is the first time we've heard anything from the punk side, at least reported. It would be it would behoove everybody on that side to not mention the fact that the dog that has been universally loved and celebrated got hit with a door. Because Listen, they were I, charging it. I also, I, I spoke to people that are somewhat on the punk side of things after this happened. I never heard anything about a dog. I was reached out by a bunch of people. People that, people that, uh, in WWE, that, that very much in, like punk, people in AEW. You know, the, the, this, I don't know. I, I'm very surprised by this coming out of, this, you know, zero hour, essentially. When the determination has been made, unless there was some sort of gag order where nobody could talk, nobody could bring out facts. 
I, there's a lot here and, and something like could, that. It also could be just trying to create a parachute. It could for, be. Yeah. For Punk on the way out. Just try to try to give him some of the higher ground. I don't I don't think Punk would lie about his dog. I feel like he would try if if the, he was lying, if he was uh, you know, if his camp, I don't know who it is in his camp. It could be a steel. It could be, you know, just random human being. It could be. But a there were a ton of people. people in that room. And that, that that's yeah. kind of the point, right? There, it wasn't. We're not talking about just two people in a room fighting and the dog was, you know, there, too. There were I mean, in but when when it took it, it didn't just happen after 30. It, this was going on for a while. Yeah, it it. it. It feels like Montreal. Like, all of this stuff (laughs) feels like AEW's Montreal and the anniversary's next week, but it is, like, how this story has turned into the biggest thing in wrestling. Yeah, and and much like Montreal. Yeah, and it completely has cast a shadow over one of AEW's best events, coming on a hot run of TV, and also at the same time, the WWE quality and consistency-wise is meeting them on the A show. We all know SmackDown was doing well, but Raw's the elder statesman. It's about to enter its 30th year. And Raw's starting to turn the tide. Some weeks it's great, yeah. some weeks it's just okay. But it hasn't been abysmal in, you know, since the changeover, I'd no, say since hasn't. SummerSlam. No, but it hasn't. For, I, I, sorry, go ahead. Andrew, I, I've got a question for you. Yeah. We're both in marketing. We're both yeah. in, you know, the world of social media and public relations. <laughs> if you're given the... T- <laughs> yes, unfortunately. I'd, I'd much rather be doing this and eating mm-hmm. sandwiches. But for you, if you were called on a Monday, on Monday morning, the day after this happens, or two days okay. after this happens, and you're asked, we'll give you seven figures for a year. You have to come in and manage the situation and find us a way out. Because the WWE, over the last 25 years, have built one of the best organizations in entertainment, in terms of business structure. Yes, They have PR people. They have all these things. AEW is much like the WWE at the start of the national expansion. Because you've got a lot of old, you know, you got a lot of wrestlers in power positions. You have a lot of people who are lifers in the industry in key positions. And then there's some people with executive experience. But a lot of that's on the Jaguar side of AEW. Yeah. There's, I, I don't know the level of within all these things where they have non-wrestling people handling some of these key positions. But if you were brought in, how would you attack this? Uh, uh, this specific issue? Yeah. Oh, it's an optics battle for sure. Uh, and and yeah. listen, I think Tony's in Tony's in a very difficult position. We're we're gonna go to a break in a couple of minutes, but I do want to talk about this. I want to continue this because Tony's, you know, it really comes down to what Tony's gonna do. And I like you said, it, some of this is just growing pains of a new company. And no matter how many things you put in place ahead of this, you are gonna experience these problems because you never have dealt with it before. And I think this is what Tony is learning with, you know, having a locker room of lunatics. It's a crazy business. You know this firsthand. I know this. I'm around enough people in pro wrestling to know uh, what an insane industry this is. And it's not a team game. It's an individual game. And when that happens, people's egos come into play. Financials come into play. You know, all this goes on. I think I've got a comp. I've got a direct comp for it. Okay. Listen, hold that thought. It's the 77 Yankees. It's the 77 Yankees. Where's Thurman? 